Okay, so we're going to be talking about bifurcation values today. We've looked at a lot of different discrete dynamical systems, and we've analyzed their long-term behavior starting at different initial values. Now what we want to look at is we want to look at the differences that occur when you change just a little piece of a discrete dynamical system. What happens when we reach a point where long-term behavior of orbits drastically changes and we're going to call that a bifurcation value. We'll, we'll see more what the bifurcation value means in just a little bit, but let's start first by defining what a family of discrete dynamical systems is. An equation of a DDS with a parameter. What that means is that there's one area of the dynamical system that is able to be manipulated. For example, this very simple discrete dynamical system um, which shows a growth rate of 4%. We look at the value C right there. That's our parameter and all of the possible different values of C give us a family of discrete dynamical systems, and that's what we're going to call this. So the, the parameter C can actually be the amount that is either harvested or stocked into this population model, if, if that's what this dynamical system is representing. For example, these two dynamical systems both belong to the same family of discrete dynamical systems. Okay, so moving on, a bifurcation value is a moment when the overall long-term behavior of the orbits of a family of discrete dynamical systems changes. One single DDS has one set of fixed points, maybe one, several, or none. When that set of fixed points changes in number or character as a result of changing a parameter, we call this a bifurcation. If we were to look at those two different examples that we saw in an earlier slide, um, if the long-term behavior of, a, of an orbit changed when we changed how much we were harvesting, we would call that a bifurcation value. But we haven't actually seen one yet, so let's move on. Basically, if I were to show you two parabolas, if I were to simply translate this parabola down, okay, this is the same parabola, but it's simply been moved down the y-axis a fair amount, what we see here is that now Whereas before, this parabola was not intersecting the y equals x line at all, we now see that there are two points where this parabola touches the y equals x line. So previously there were no fixed points at all, but now there are two. So somewhere along the way in translating this parabola, a new set of fixed points appeared. Somewhere along the way in translating these parabolas, we reached a bifurcation value. So let's take a look at another example. Okay, x squared plus 3x plus c. So this is an upward-facing parabola. Um, it's been shifted a little bit over to the left and a little bit down. Um, and then depending on what the value of c is, this parabola could be translated a little bit up, a little bit down, etc. So basically, this is a family of dynamical systems. If we solve for x, and if we use the quadratic equation, we find that these are our potential answers for fixed points. Uh, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus c. What happens if c is equal to 1? Well, then in that case, the square root term goes to 0, and negative 1 plus or minus 0 is just negative 1. So that means that when c is equal to 1, we see only one fixed point. The parabola is only just barely hitting the y equals x line in just one fixed point. At c greater than 1, what we see is a negative number underneath the square root, and that's, well, that, that means that there's no real answers because the square root of a negative number is actually a non-real number. So what we would see here in this case is the same parabola, but translated up significantly enough that it is actually not touching the y equals x line at all, meaning that there are no fixed points in this case. At c less than 1, we see two fixed points, because then what we have is we have two distinct answers for negative 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus c. Um, we'll have, you know, negative 1 plus square root of 1 minus c, and we also have negative 1 minus square root of 1 minus c. And so what we would see in this particular situation is something that looks a little bit like this. So now in this case, what we have is a parabola that is passing through the y equals x line twice, which indicates that there are two different fi fixed points that are distinct from each other. A tangent bifurcation is occurring. In this particular case, that means that when the bifurcation value is reached, the parabola, the graph of the DDS itself, is actually tangent to the y equals x line. That's what a tangent bifurcation is. So at the bifurcation value of 
uh, c equals 1, what we see is we see a point of tangency on the parabola, on the graph of the DDS, um, right at the bifurcation value of um, c. Um, so this is where the bifurcation value is, because for a values a little bit greater than 1 and for values a little bit less than 1, the long-term behavior of different orbits changes.